Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Our text once again from our epistle, Philippians 3, 17, reading through 4, verse 1. Dear friends in Christ, in 304 AD, the Roman emperor gave a command that all people in Iconium had to offer a sacrifice to the pagan gods. A Christian woman by the name of Julita decided to leave the city with her three-year-old Cyrenius in order to escape persecution. In Tarsus, however, she was arrested, brought back to Iconium, and had to stand before the governor, a man by the name of Alexander. She admitted she was a Christian, and consequently, she was tortured. Now, she endured these moments of torture with great patience. But her little son cried loudly when he saw his mother suffering. He desperately wanted to go to her, and even the hard-hearted governor was touched by the boy's tears and went so far as to take the child in his lap in an attempt to calm him down. Still, the boy cried and called for his mother. Finally, the boy began to imitate the words of his mother by saying over and over again, I am a Christian, I am a Christian, I am a Christian. And with this, the governor was filled with sudden rage and hurled the boy to the ground head first, killing him instantly. Jalitta was full of grief, but actually thanked God with a loud voice that her little boy, Cyricus, had gone on before her into heaven and would not have to witness her death. After that, the governor increased her torture and eventually had her beheaded. Before she died, Jalitta offered up this prayer, I thank you, O oh my God, that you transferred my son into your kingdom. Grant also that I, your servant, though unworthy, may likewise be received there. Lead me like the wise virgins into your wedding chamber. We have a lot of reactions to a story like that. Sadness, certainly, for the mother and the son. Anger at the governor, and what an example for every Christian. These Christians really lived and demonstrated what our text says. They knew their citizenship was in heaven, and they were able to stand firm in the Lord. Who among us would do the same thing? Oh we, might, oh, we might be quick to say yes, but we are the same people who live in this luxurious society and panic at the first sign of anything that might intrude into our comfort zone. We grumble at God, yet we build ourselves up that we can stand firm like Jalitta and Cyricus. But the deeper question for us to examine today is what was it that gave them the strength to endure what God had allowed to happen in us? Paul addresses that in our text as he encourages us to stand firm, heavenly citizens. Now the epistle of Philippians is mostly upbeat and encouraging, even though Paul himself is in change for the gospel. Now the thread in our reading is walking apart from Christ. It's easy for us to fall back on the law and cling to the confidence of our own accomplishments. What did you give up for Lent this year? Soda? Potato chips? Social media? Alcohol? Political debates? It's fine to practice self-discipline but we take it too far if we hold it over the head of God or over our neighbor. You want to impress God and your co-worker. It may be harmless on the surface, but ultimately it rejects the cross and all that Jesus accomplished for you there. We stand firm because we are citizens of heaven. Citizenship in verse 20 can also be translated homeland. We have homeland security, not because of some cabinet position in Washington, D.C., but because of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He opened, he opened heaven to us by his life and death and resurrection and ascension. And by grace, 
God has made us citizens of that heaven through holy baptism. This is our present reality. And you see, as heaven citizens, we anxiously await our Savior's return. We occupy our minds with heavenly thoughts through worship, devotion, Bible study, and prayer. We ate heavenly food and as the true body and blood of Jesus is fed to us for forgiveness and gives us a taste of the feast to come in our eternal homeland. And we walk according to the examples of citizens of Christ's kingdom. We stand firm to the end, anxiously awaiting the transformation of our bodies to be like His glorious body. So getting back to our question, what gave Jolita and Cyricus the strength to endure what happened in their lives? They were looking ahead to a glorious future that was far greater than anything they could have here on earth. Their hearts and minds were set on heavenly things and nothing was more important than their eternal salvation. It's really that simple. They died for the faith because they knew they would live. May the Holy Spirit strengthen us in that same faith. May He lead us to stand firm even as we see the signs around us that may call us to stand before government officials and judges. Our homeland is in the distance, but possibly nearer than we think. The Lord is our strength, so stand firm, heavenly.